police departments here for the series Police Cars. And I don't know if you can tell by the intro and by where I'm standing here, but today we're gonna be with Florida Highway Patrol. That's F. HP. That's right, ever since I started the police car series here on this channel, you guys have requested FHP down in the comments, and today we're making it happen. Now if you guys don't know, it's your first time visiting, we do a series here on this channel called Police Cars, so if you're not subscribed, make sure you click the subscribe button. There's going to be tons more police departments that we're going to be visiting. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the last Police Cars video, I'm going to link it down below. It's with Fort Lauderdale and their Jeep, but today, today we're with FHP. So right now, uh, we're just hanging out in front of the station. This is the Florida Highway Patrol Troop E headquarters, like the main headquarters for the Miami-Dade and Monroe County. Uh, I'm gonna meet up with the lieutenant. I just matter of fact, it, there he is. How's Morning. it going? What's up, brother? LT. How are you? How you guys doing? All right, introduce yourself to the Nod Squad. Absolutely, Lieutenant Camacho, Florida Highway Patrol Troop E, Miami, Monroe County, Public Affairs, Community Relations. But today, we're gonna showcase some really cool cars. Awesome. Uh, appreciate you taking the time coming on police cars Absolutely. here. Uh, this is your police station. Yes, it is. This is the police station Troop E headquarters. Uh, this our headquarters in Miami Dade. We have another station in uh, Monroe County, and um, but this is where we get most of the stuff done in Miami Dade. All right, so you ready to go? Let's do it. All right. All right, guys. So every day, this is my office. This is where all the magic happens, right in here. But uh, today, we're not going to really focus on that office. We're gonna we're gonna focus on the office on wheels outside. So I like I like the glass. I'm not gonna lie. Like, yeah, like the movies. It's a bit of a kind of a fishbowl. Yeah, every, everything you're doing, everybody's watching. People come by, kind of tap on the glass. <laughs> you wave high at them. But uh, it is what it is. We make I the like best it. of it. All right. So where are we going? We're going outside. Show you the office on wheels. <laughs> Guys, welcome to the back of our station. This is where the troopers come in, and uh, whenever they got work to do, they'll come by the station, drop off some paperwork. Many of our vehicles here. We're utilizing at now, we're using uh, Tahoes, we're using Explorers, we're using Chargers, some expedition for our uh, command staff, not really for our road unit. So the entire parking lot is gated. This is actually our um, seized vehicle lot. Whenever we have vehicles that we have to seize for an investigation a case, uh, they're stored back here. It's an extension of our evidence uh, locker. So that's back, back behind this black fence here? That's correct. Back behind that black tarp on that side is all vehicles that have been seized and are still uh, being, you know, wait, awaiting trial and things like that. Okay. So your pound? The pound. There that's you right. Go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, I see you got some larger vehicles over there. This is our uh, MRAP which is used for our uh, SRT team whenever they have to uh, you know, serve a warrant or anything of that nature. SRT, Special Response Team. Special Response Team, that's right. We do have two uh, SRT teams throughout the state, one northern region and one southern region. And uh, they get to ride around in that monster, which is pretty cool. I did not know you guys have one of those. Most people don't, man. Most people don't know it. But yeah, we have two. We have two teams. Future episode? Absolutely. Let's do it. Future episode. Oh, and what about that one right there? So this is the original SRT truck. Uh, not really being used too much because it's been obviously uh, replaced by the one we just showed you. But uh, this is part of our retro fleet collection. Retro uh, fleet collection. Retro fleet collection. I like it. That's right. And I, I see. I see something over there in the back. Yeah, we got a Crown Vic. We don't see too many of those. Uh, that got, right there is one of the original. Police. We got a couple of cars that we like to preserve, and uh, you know, it just keeps things. Uh, Wait. You know, what's that over there? What's that? Wait, man. What was that? Oh, Tell man, me about that. I want to know about that. That's top secret, man. You said you wanted one car. I can't show you all the goodies, man. What was that, <laughs> man? What's it going to take for us to see what's behind those doors? Come on. I think it's going to take at least a... Uh... How about, how about a thousand likes, thousand thumbs up on this video? Huh? But wait, a thousand, there's two cars. Should be okay. Two okay. thousand. All right. Two thousand likes on this video and we're going to follow up with FHP and see what's behind these doors. It's worth it. Huh? It's worth it? Oh yeah. All right, retro, part of the retro fleet? Part of the retro Super fleet. Super retro fleet. Super retro fleet, that's right. I like it. All right, so let's talk about what we got today. All right, guys, here she is. 2018 Dodge Charger RT. Of course, the Hemi package. It's got a lot of cool stuff. This car actually just came down from our uh, shop that actually equips these cars with all the emergency lighting, sirens, uh, prisoner partitions. Brand new car. Brand new car. Hasn't even even been issued to a trooper yet. Really? Yep. So we get the first look. First look, exclusive, just for you guys. All right, wait, wait, wait. Can we get some B-roll? Of course, absolutely. Go ahead. 
you roll time. Alright guys, let's start it from the top. Our unique uh, wraparound push bumper utilized for two things. Number one, obviously we have to push disabled vehicles out of uh, roadways to avoid traffic congestions. But here's the cool part. This portion of it is used for uh, whenever vehicles are pursuing or fleeing from us and we're pursuing these vehicles. We actually, uh, our policy allows our troopers to uh, perform the pit maneuver on these vehicles that are, that are fleeing from us. So, pit maneuvers. Pit maneuver. What, explain what that is. Precision immobilization technique. It's what you see on TV whenever you uh, use the front, uh, one of the front corners of your vehicle to clip the, one of the rear corners of the fleeing vehicle. Uh, it'll spin that vehicle out of control and it'll allow us to stop the vehicle and, and avoid uh, potential you know, hazards uh, with all the motorists on the road. Fun fact. One of the few agencies where their policy permits them to use that type of maneuver in the state of Florida. One of the few. I see what you mean by the, the wraparound. A lot of agencies, they'll just have this, this front piece right here. Right. And you guys have the wraparound. Kind of like, look, kind of like those. Right. They have just the front piece. Right. But uh, let's see, these are, these are new. So brand we, new. We, we've added this extension, this portion of it. Uh, because what happens is some of the some of the troopers that were performing the pit maneuver, they were getting damaged to their car, they were damaging their headlights, and a damaged headlight will put the car out of commission and we can't use that car, so we'd have to go into a spare car. And this kind of avoids it. The bar gets a little messed up, but it's much easier to fix than all the other cosmetic stuff. Also, a part of our push bumper is we have the LED lights equipped in the front uh, bar of it, along with our uh, sirens and our PA system speaker. There's also some lights on this corner of it, which just gives the light more of an angle when we have to clear uh, intersection. It just covers every angle for visibility and obviously safety. All right, moving forward. So the two-tone paint scheme, which is really what our patrol cars are known for. The Florida Highway Patrol is big on tradition. And uh, this two-tone paint scheme, the black and tan, has been the same since the early 1940s. And as you can see it today, 2019, it remains the same. The black and tan, two-tone, uh, it's very unique. There are no other uh, vehicles with this paint scheme on it. And I think it, uh, I think it looks pretty cool. So the spotlight, which at night is, is very big when we're doing traffic stops and we need all the visibility we can get inside of a, a vehicle that we're stopping. Uh, this is a great tool to have. Uh, it helps when we're searching a vehicle. It really just lights everything up. Um, speaking of lighting things up, this is our new uh, unique light bar uh, by Federal Signal. It's a new kind of uh, triangular design. Gives more light output for when clearing intersections to the side, towards the front also. But it's very low profile. Uh, can't really see it too much from far away. Um, and a big thing is it doesn't make a lot of noise, wind noise, because it's not this big kind of uh, old school, you know, brick light bar sitting on your roof. Kind of like those over there, not to pick, not to yeah. pick on those cars over there. Yeah, those things. Kind of like those. Yeah, you can see much more high profile. It's not the most aerodynamic, and you can definitely so, hear it. Explain, because some people probably haven't been in a police car. Yeah. Um, what do you mean by noise? So when you're inside of a police car, and even these aren't that bad but when you get into the older light systems that are really tall and not aerodynamic at all you hear the wind kind of hitting that and it makes a lot of wind noise inside of the car and when you're listening to the radio for for calls coming out and you gotta you know you gotta really listen to things that kind of reduces it because there's so much wind noise in there but with this one it's such a low profile you don't even really hear it that much our insignia for the side of the car which has the state flag on it uh, back here, the Star FHP. A lot of people don't know Star FHP, which is also a Star 347. You can use that to report uh, any crime you might see on the highway, uh, somebody doing graffiti, a traffic crash, anything. It's like, kind of like dialing 911, but just for anything the highway patrol related. I did not know that. Yeah, most people don't. Seen it for years. Yep. And no clue that that's what that was. That's what it means, yeah. But now we know. That's right. And knowing is half the battle. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe. <laughs> Moving to the rear. One steps to the rear. More of the light package here uh, around the tag. It's for just levels of lighting. Uh, again, the insignia on the trunk and the reflective tape on the rear bumper for uh, visibility at night. These, uh, these stripes here are actually reflect at night. 
uh, when you have cars approaching you, they'll see these, uh, these uh, six stripes throughout the back of the car. All right, guys, so that was a quick rundown. What do you say we jump in and we go discuss it a little more? Let's do it. Like I mentioned before, the whole new light package on the car, new light bar, new push bumper lights. There's lights all over this thing because some of the troopers that work throughout the state, they don't work in areas that are as populated as Miami is. So when you get into that, then you don't have as many street lights. So uh, these lights are meant to stop uh, other cars and, and for emergency responding. But at the same time, it also helps the troopers uh, with visibility when you're in a, a roadway that's not lit up and it gets it can be very dark. So the push bumper has lights up top here, right at the top of the bar. There's two lights on the side here for more of an angle. Uh, there's lights on the liner, on the roof liner inside of the car course the light bar and what we've noticed is when you're coming from far away the more layers of lights you have in the car the further away you could actually see the lights coming so we have the light bar on the roof we have um, lights on the on the trunk lid you have lights in the flasher and the back lights lights underneath the uh, the tail lights and the bumper and it creates these layers of lights that can be seen from much more of a distance so that's the reason behind all that that's why there's so many lights in the car you even got this little guy. Side lights, like I said, whenever you're clearing an intersection, this is the first part of the car you see. This guy and this guy. So right away, when you're just starting to peek out, you're trying to clear an intersection, you got these two guys already lighting the path for you. Uh, get cars to slow down so we can safely cross these intersections. Uh, along the bottom here, we have all of these, these three LED lights as well. Again, for high visibility throughout the side of the car. Uh, then that brings us to the new light bar, which is why we went to this light bar, because it gives us much more uh, light from the side of the car. Again, clearing intersections. Uh, normally, the cars on the side didn't have a lot of lights. The front had lights, the back had lights. But we realized we needed lights on the side of the car. That's why we went with this light bar. That's why we put lights along the bottom of the car, on the sides, pretty much uh, everywhere that we thought was appropriate. Okay, so let's check out the back of the car, the lights in the rear of the car. All right. So up top, you have the directional bar. It could be used for like maintenance of traffic. If you have a lane closure, this can kind of tell uh, motorists to go left or go right. Just avoid that lane. That's what that's the purpose of the directional bar. We have the flasher on the factory halo of the car. We've converted it into a flasher, which also serves as an emergency light. So this is the halo is actually part of the factory uh, lighting of the car. We've just added a flasher to make it uh, go with the light uh, pattern through the smart bars. Uh, along the tags, you have a set of LED lights as well. And again, like I mentioned, the layers. We also have the little lights at the bottom, uh, towards the bottom of the bumper, just to create that layer of for more visibility from further away. These are a lot of lights. Yep. It's important to be highly visible out there uh, while patrolling the right. highways. Right. So what else can help you? Because I know there's some other things that can help and maybe some messages you want to tell the Nod Squad so they can relay the message and spread the word. What's, what's a good thing or a good tip, you know, when, when they see you out there, you know, in the act of duty when you're, when you're patrolling or you're on a stop or something like that? Well, like you mentioned, the lights, they do a lot for us for the visibility, but sometimes it's not enough. So that's why the move over law was actually uh, enacted. It basically helps protect those, us, law enforcement, fire rescue, uh, road rangers, all these people that are providing critical services on the side of the road for disabled motorists or, or people that are, are, are in need of, of an officer because they've been involved in a, in a major crash. They could have injuries, they're waiting on fire rescue. So now when we're on the side of the road uh, working with these incidents, uh, we ask that people, when they see that approaching a scene, they either move over a lane. If they're not able to move over a lane, we understand that that's not always possible. We ask that you slow your speed 20 miles under the posted speed limit. And again, it's just a courtesy for us uh, when we're providing these critical services on there on the side of the road and the highways. And uh, that's that's one of the things that we're luckily enough that was passed and uh, helps protect us because at the end of the day, we want to get home to our families as well. All right, LT, you ready? Ready. Now, guys, this is our first time on police cars hearing the siren. So, let's try it this way. LT is gonna hit the siren 
and then we're gonna put up on the screen what siren does what, or what sounds like what. Inside. Do it, come on in. So I noticed as we're driving in this car, everyone seems to be using their turn signal. <laughs> We tend to have that effect on people. I mean, I, I guess it's the car, you know, people tend to play by the rules. Yeah. Hey. What? Nick. Yeah. I noticed something. What happened? You're, you're, you're riding in a highway patrol car. Yes, I'm honored. But there's something wrong here. What? I'm wearing my seatbelt. No, man. You need to be wearing one of these. Ooh, no way. It's like a rite of passage? Rite of passage. Exactly. Oh, right. This is a lot better than the canine <laughs> unit. Like a, a bite. Look at this thing. So that's what I do. Don't mess up. Oh, man. That looks good. Oh, outstanding. Oh, man. That looks sharp. Outstanding. I feel intimidating. Oh, man. This is good. <laughs> do you mind if I go home to the wife with this hat? Yeah, baby. Yeah. You can keep it as a token of our appreciation. <laughs> no way. Yeah. No way. I'm honored. Oh, guys. What do you think? I think I'm gonna start every uh, police car video with. By this the app. way, man, I think you know we're hiring, right? Really? Yeah. Beatrooper.com. Beatrooper.com. Hat fits you well, and it might fit you well out there. Yeah, plug. So, guys, <laughs> I'm gonna put the link down below. Beatrooper.com. If you want to wear one of these hats too, just go down, click the link below, and uh, they're hiring. Wow. And how big is the agency? Statewide, we have just under 2,000 sworn uh, troopers patrolling, again, statewide. Uh, locally, here in Miami, it's just under 200 in Miami-Dade County. And is, is this the standard issue vehicle? I know there's, in some agencies, um, there's some vehicles used for certain things. Is this the standard issue vehicle? This, this is the vehicle that we assign to our road patrol troopers. This is the vehicle you're gonna get. This exact light package, this exact prisoner partition, this computer stand. Everything you see here is what a trooper is issued on the road. This is not a, a like a specialized vehicle or anything like that. And why the Chargers? Why not a Taurus or a Fusion? There's a couple of reasons why we go with the Charger. I know cost is a reason. It's, it's a little bit uh, more affordable uh, for the amount of cars we, the, the agency purchases. Number two, this comes with the Hemi, the 5.7 Hemi, the V8 uh, package. It's got just under 400 horsepower. And when we're doing uh, a lot of highway uh, speed enforcement, you got cars coming by us pretty fast. And when we're at a stop, we need to not only catch that vehicle that's already doing a, a pretty high speed, but now we need to catch up and overtake that vehicle. So we need really as much power, as much performance as, as we can get. So where are we at? So we're at an, uh, an out of service toll plaza here on the side of the highway. Just came here to get some footage and talk about the inside of the car. Let's talk about it. Hold on guys, I gotta get into my trooper mode. I'm gonna go on the other side, hold on. I'm gonna approach from the driver's side. LT. Hey, you're looking like a trooper, man. I'm gonna have to ask you to step outside the vehicle. Yes, sir. So I can get some B-roll. <laughs> <laughs> So 
So starting from the top, we have our new uh, Panasonic 360 degree camera system. There's a total of five cameras in this car. There's one on each side, one in the back, one in the front, and then there's one inside of the prisoner partition for uh, whenever we have a detainee or an arrestee that's being transported. Coming on down here to the computer stand, of course this is where the computer gets its power from. This is all connected to our printer here when we're printing uh, copies of reports, uh, issuing citations, they're all printed, no more handwritten stuff here. Our driver's license scanner, when you hand us your license, we simply, if you notice on the back of every license, there's like this little barcode type of thing. We scan it right here, all of the information gets relayed into the computer and it gives us all the information we need. Coming further down, the uh, smart box for the light system, this also controls the sirens. One, two, three, as you were mentioning in another video, uh, one, it just depends, different changes the patterns of the lights depending on the higher you go, and it also incorporates sirens if you go on three. Uh, we went over the sirens, uh, the, the uh, air horn, the radio system for communication with our dispatch center, mounted right here, here's the microphone for that. This so let me ask you about the dispatch thing, because mm -hmm. it's interesting. You guys can, can talk to Tallahassee from there, or how do you have to do that? No, we have uh, different regional communication centers. Okay. So we have for Miami, Miami Regional Communication Centers, and there's uh, a bunch of uh, communication centers throughout the state. Okay. So, so we only communicate with the Miami Towers. All right. Um, PA system uh, microphone here. Back here we have a charger for our handheld radios in case you're running low on battery, you can just charge it right back here. I noticed uh, you guys say highway patrol, but where's all the radar stuff? Where's that equipment? So the radars are actually issued to troopers and then those troopers get them installed in the vehicles, whether it's a radar or a laser. Um, they're issued to the troopers. Now this particular car, like we mentioned, is brand new. It hasn't even been issued to a trooper, but once it's assigned to a trooper, that trooper then gets the radar equipment uh, installed, how whatever configuration they like, and it kind of uh, customizes to them. Can we look at the back seat? Let's do it. All right, guys, the back seat. Man, these guys, this is nice. Is that leather? Leather. Come on in, man. It's comfortable, and there's also, we can talk about these cameras. I know you're a camera guy. We have our new 360 cameras, and I want you to get a close look. Yeah, the padding in here is nice. A uh, little bit of leg room. And, hey, there's no handles back here. Hey, Nick, uh, I remember seeing uh, one of your videos where you were actually crossing through Alligator Alley and uh, you happened to see a trooper. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> You'll never catch me, copper. Never. <laughs> Can't catch me, huh? <laughs> no! <laughs> Just kidding. Let me let you out, man. Oh my god! You'll never catch me. Yeah. Enough of that. So, I noticed you guys have a lot of cameras. Uh, usually, it, there's one camera in the front, and then maybe a uh, trooper's wearing one here. So you guys are expanding your, your view. What's going on? Tell me. So instead of going with body cameras, like you mentioned, we went with the 360 degree system because a lot of times uh, if we're involved in a significant event or uh, going towards an investigation, not everything we do or see happens in front of the car. So this just helps get a complete picture of everything around us, each side of the car, the back of the car, wherever it might be. Uh, it just tells a better, uh, you get a better picture of everything that's happening. All right, sir, this is where it gets a little weird. I'm not gonna lie. This is where you show us the junk in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, now remember, I told you this car hasn't been assigned to anybody because if it was assigned to somebody, you'd see a lot more equipment in here. There's really nothing in here right now other than all of our uh, technical electronic stuff. You can see here, this is kind of like the brains of the car. Uh, the radio system, it's missing the rocket system, which is, uh, the rocket is really the brains of the car. It enables our internet connection, uh, GPS, our uh, vehicle locators, we can see where all of the all of our patrol vehicles are. Um, this is for the light boxes, all of the, uh, the, the lighting. This is the camera. And when this car, if it was assigned to somebody, you'd see things like, uh, you know, uh, first aid kits, uh, flares, rifles, shotguns, just a bunch of stuff that would be in here. But uh, that'll be for the next one. All right. 
So LT, I uh, appreciate your time. The Nod Squad appreciates your time giving a rundown of the vehicle and telling us how, how you guys do things at FHP and telling us a little bit about the Charger. So, uh, usually at the end of the video, we tell everyone about the Challenge Coin giveaway. Uh, guys, I dropped the ball on that one. Uh, I didn't brief the LT in enough time, but he's gonna work to acquire some. Yep. And we'll let you guys know about those Challenge Coins and how you can win those Challenge Coins. But to beat the crowd, you're gonna have to go over to their Twitter account, okay? And your Twitter account is? At FHP Miami. That's right, you're gonna have to go over to their Twitter account at FHP Miami and follow their account. So I'll link their account down below. You're gonna have to go over to Twitter and follow their account. You're also gonna have to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram. I'll put all the links down below. You guys can follow uh, and then you'll be eligible to win the challenge coins when we get them. So LT. There's only one thing left to do. The sign off. My man, hit him with it. I'll see you when I see you. And if I don't see you, then I'll see you. My man! All right, guys. <laughs> All right, I'll see you later. Later, man. We forgot something. I'll see you, wait. Wait.